Daddy, look, I drew a picture. I put on my best appraising my son's artwork face and looked down at the picture he had drawn. I recoiled a little when I saw it, not really sure what to make of it. It was... It, it was a baby head, like a, like a baby doll, but no body was attached to it. The hair was gone, nothing but dots on the scalp, and the eyes were missing, staring openly. A big silver loop, like a smile, ran through the head, and the bottom was covered with little metal legs, like, like spider legs. I looked at it a moment, wondering what this horrible thing was, but suddenly it came to me. I felt silly for being anxious. Good job, buddy. Is this the, uh, this is Spider Baby from Toy Story? Handing it back to him. No, Dad, it's the monster that comes to my window at night. I sighed audibly. The monster had become a point of contention in our house as of late. Every night for the past three weeks, my son had woken up screaming because there was a monster outside his window. Ever since we had moved into our new house, it had been a regular nightly event, and I had almost started waking up before the screaming. It never mattered how fast I ran. There was never anything there when I arrived. He was always sitting up in his bed, pointing out the window, crying about a, a monster looking in at him. When we got home, he grabbed his tablet and began watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, as he would want to do after school. I made sure that he was comfortable on the couch and not likely to run out of the front door and started washing dishes. Between the three of us, we usually made a fair amount of dishes, so I was just finishing up when my wife came home, grimacing at the picture on the fridge as she came in. That's an interesting piece of work, she said, kissing me on the cheek. Apparently, that's the monster that's been waking him up every night, I said, making her frown as she sat at the table. Ugh, it's the monster again? This has got to stop. We have to do something. I shrugged, tossing the drying rag into the sink. I wish I knew what. What if you spent the night in there tonight? I looked dubiously at her. What? Like, on the floor or something? No, you could sleep on the other bed in there. I forgot there was two beds in my son's room. They were bunk beds, one on the ground level, one on the top. One was supposed to be for guests, the playmates or cousins who wanted to spend the night. The other was for him. And in reality, though, it was more of an excuse for my son to pick a bed to sleep in every night. He usually slept on the top bunk, sitting right beneath the window. But sometimes he likes to sleep in the smaller bed at floor level. Okay. I guess I'll spend the night in there. Promise you'll reward me in the morning? I teased. She said she would, and giggled when I kissed her on the ear. The reward would never come, though. That night, we went through our nightly routine. After dinner, we brushed our teeth, put on our pajamas, and got ready for bed. As I picked up the book and directed him to the loft bed, though, he grabbed my arm and shook his head. I thought he would argue about bedtime, and... I mean, he wasn't a big one for bedtime. Instead, he just shook his head and pointed to the bottom bunk. Can I sleep there? He asked, pointing to the bottom bunk. I sighed and looked up at the top bunk, wondering how I would get up that tiny little staircase. One look at my son showed me something serious was going on. He looked scared. Too scared for a kid his age, and I was suddenly kind of scared myself. What was so scary about this bed? This wasn't the first time he'd balked at the idea of sleeping on the loft bed. I was kind of hesitant to climb in it. I got over this quickly and told him that he could sleep at the bottom bed if he wanted. So we read our Clifford book, and I turned off the lights, swinging up into the top bunk as I snuggled down to sleep. For a few hours, I slept fitfully. I was awakened in the dark of night by a light scratching at the window. It wasn't a loud scratching. It was soft, like something rubbing lightly against the glass as it attempted to get my attention. Maybe a fingernail, maybe a knife tip, but it was consistent in its effort as it rubbed. After the picture earlier, my tired mind conjured an image of a baby head with a metal spider leg scratching at the glass. In my dream, it dug perfect grooves into the glass like a jewel thief's tool in a movie. And it was making progress through the window, 
The baby's head had a mouthful of metal teeth to go along with its legs. The teeth gnashed at the glass as the legs cut. I could do little else but lay there and watch him cut through the transparent barrier. I woke up as he scuttled in and leapt at my face, its twisting metal teeth twinkling. When I woke up, I thought the dream hadn't quite ended. The scraping continued. That soft, whispery sound. And I opened my eyes and glanced at the window. I was covered, a pillow over my head, and my eyes peeked from beneath a corner of the blanket. I was still half asleep, and as the crust broke away from my eyes, I thought I might still be dreaming. I saw the baby head, middle legs still scrabbling, pressing against the window. I lay still, watching the little creature bounce off the glass. Its scalp was a stubby patch of yanked out hair. Its blue eye looked straight ahead, placidly, while the other yawned vacantly. The metal legs were bumping and rubbing, making scratching sounds against the glass. They didn't seem as dexterous as they were in my dream. The monstrous thing seemed like a Halloween decoration, something blown out by the wind as it swung from a post. And as I watched it shake and spasm, I noticed the ring. The ring from the picture, a thick metal loop, ran through the head and connected it to a thick chain. I looked, following the chain, and the outline of a person began to come into view. He was framed perfectly against the privacy bushes in front of my windows, his clothes blending seamlessly. He was tall, six feet at least, and his body was large and looked strong beneath his sweater. His face was doughy and pockmarked as it pressed against the window glass, his tongue wet and forming bubbles as it slid over the filthy glass. His flesh was pressed to the window as he looked into the shady room, and his eyes searched for something. Thankfully, my son probably never saw him, and had only ever seen the strange baby head necklace. If he had seen this strange face pressed against the window, he would have likely never slept in his bed again. The man's eyes found mine suddenly, his crazed look sobering a little as he realized I was not my son. We locked eyes, and and uh, I'm ashamed to say that I did not deliver some piercing look that scared him away. I was, I was just as scared as my son was every night before he had started screaming in my dazed and fearful state. We stared at each other for a count of five before he broke and ran off into the night. The police just left, taking a complete statement and checking the bushes for evidence. My son is asleep in my bed, my wife having wrapped him in her protective arms, and I'm sitting on the edge, setting this to words. Tomorrow I'm going to the hardware store. I'm going to be coming back with wood to board up the window. I don't care if this weirdo ever comes back or not. Before I let my son spend the night in that room again, I will make sure no one can ever peek through that window again. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. If you guys are confused about what I'm talking about every time I say tonight's video, or tonight's episode of the podcast, you can always find out more about that at youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta, where you can subscribe and get the latest video. Or if you're listening to the videos, then you can find it on Spotify under Mr. Creepypasta Storytime, and you can listen to this as a podcast, you know, if you want to save yourself your data. Or if you're listening on the podcast and you're like, man, what episode is this? I don't know how to find more of this or what came before it. Check out the YouTube. There's full playlists of all the series and they go years back, which I can't do on the podcast, unfortunately. And like always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs and I really appreciate it. If you guys want to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and see all these cool, fine folk that I'm about to mispronounce the names of here or in the description down below. People such as Jacob Schaefer, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Arce, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Melancholy Corpse, Hollow Zero, Ferb, Harley, Tainted Raven, Katie Birch, Sashi Sazaku, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, 
My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Zandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Azreen Fox, Robert White, Andre Garcia, Snails Brennard, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Levins, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, 1-800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the channel. You're all wonderful. I, I, I love every single one of you guys. For real, you guys help me out so much, as well as everybody down there in the description below, as well as everybody else who watches and subs and, and does everything else with this channel. Thank you guys so much. And as always, sweet dreams. <laughs>